Hey guys, welcome back! For this week and next week, I wanted to make an updated version of my old top 5 characters video that I made last year. But to keep things a bit more fair, what I plan on doing is dividing up the roster so that damage dealers have their own category while supports have another. I know this isn't what I normally make on this channel, but I've done top 5s or top 10s in the past on my other channels, and I enjoy them a lot, so I hope you do as well. With that said, today we're going to be going over the top 5 best DPS characters in Genshin Impact. With that kind of video title, there's bound to be a lot of assumptions or preconceptions, so let's get this out of the way. Like I said countless times before, Genshin Impact isn't known for its difficulty. No matter what you hear from myself, other creators, or discussion boards in general, anyone and everyone in this game is balanced enough to be usable for the majority of the game's content, if not all of it. Will it take more effort on your part for lower tier units? Of course, but there are plenty of instances where supposedly bad characters like Amber have been seen clearing floor 12 Spiral Abyss or soloing Raiden Shogun. Essentially, characters in Genshin, especially damage dealers, are rated based on three factors. First, their overall efficiency, how quickly and comfortably they're able to complete the task at hand. Going back to the earlier example of Amber, with enough time and investment she can work as your main or sub DPS. Will she do as much damage as Yoimiya? Absolutely not. The former's damage ceiling doesn't reach anywhere near the latter's by virtue of stats and coverage. Furthermore, efficiency is also predicated on how expensive they are to gear up. There might be someone with a lot of potential, but tapping into that potential may not be accessible for most players. Second, their consistency. For some characters, they may have incredible damage output, but only if paired up with the right characters, meaning you can't slot them into a bunch of different parties with different units based on the situation. Coverage matters a lot for units in gacha games, where developers try to throw a lot of circumstantial elements at the player to force them to have multiple answers on deck at all times. Third, and the most obvious one, their damage. How much damage do they provide? The present rule of thumb on building your party is that you have one damage dealer and three supports. Ultimately, with how bosses and dungeons are structured, damage is of utmost priority for every party member. Until Hoyo decides to implement more strategy-oriented gameplay, the only thing that matters in Genshin is how fast you can kill stuff. Lastly, I want to remind you that top 5s, like any other tier list, are at least somewhat influenced by opinion. Everyone has their preferences for what they consider important in a character, so rest assured that just because I don't include someone, it doesn't mean they're bad or not worth using. But if any of you are starting out fresh and are wondering what are some good 5 star damage dealers to look out for, these would be it. So time to get started, and this will be in no particular order. First online we have Ganyu, a staple character that's been around for a year and a half at this point. Aside from being adored by the community for her personality and appearance, for most of us, Ganyu was the first major DPS character to be introduced to the game, as Albedo, Klee, and Zhongli were still very niche at the time, and Child wasn't all that popular since he didn't receive his personal weapon until much later. Surprisingly, Ganyu's overall damage output is comparatively not very impressive. Oh, make no mistake, she hits like a truck, but it's not really in the same way as everyone else. Despite theoretically serving as the main DPS for her party, Ganyu's shining virtue is her persistence. Thanks to her aim shot having two charge levels, at level 2 it becomes a frost flake arrow shattering upon hitting an enemy or a terrain and striking nearby enemies for heavy cryo damage. In Genshin, the main weakness of bow users is their poor area coverage, as bow attacks, whether normal or aimed, can only strike one enemy barring certain conditions. Ganyu is the only bow user who doesn't have this issue, and before you say child doesn't either, let's be real, you can't even call him a bow user half the time. She has virtually permanent uptime through Frost Lake arrows, allowing you to use only that and still take care of most enemies. Additionally, her elemental skill and burst also contribute a significant amount of pressure and utility. Trail of the Chilling corrals enemies together, making it easier for her and her team to pile on all their damage while Celestial Shower envelops a huge area in cryo damage for a long time. All your cryo-related needs can be met with her. She has a lot of supportive elements as well, such as Bones Cryo Damage and Shred for her team. With her versatile elemental skill and burst, she has no trouble fitting into any sort of team composition you can think of. If you want her to be a main damage dealer, sub damage dealer, team her up with Pyro, Hydro, Animal, Electro units, you name it. The way her kit was designed lets her comfortably handle any number of enemies or any situation. She can take care of herself well in either burst rotation teams or extended fights. I would argue her only real downside is that she lacks an explosive nuke the way other 5 star damage dealers do. And while that's not enough to diminish her exceptional all purpose attributes, it's still worth mentioning. Fortunately, that's somewhat remedied by her being one of the least expensive units in the game. It doesn't take that much investment for her to get going. So the cryo element has not one, but two characters on this list. The second being Ayaka, who is more top heavy compared to Ganyu who prefers a general approach. There's been a lot of debate over Ayaka being potentially the strongest main DPS unit in the entire game if we go by sheer numbers, and that's mainly due to her elemental burst. Kamisato Art Sometsu, the Ice Blizzard, hits 19 times as it travels forward, each dealing over 200% damage at max rank followed by a final explosion. If you manage to land every hit, you're staring down well over 4,000% in damage scaling, a figure not matched by anyone in the game before or since. 
This can be further amplified by her constellation too, adding an extra 40% more effective damage, easily the strongest elemental burst in damage scaling at that point. Ayaka's regular damage is not half bad either. I wouldn't say it's the same as Ganyu's, but they share the same consistency. Ayaka has the ability to permanently maintain cryo infusion through her dash, whereas other characters can only do so for short periods of time, and her elemental skill Hyoka does a large chunk of cryo damage up front. Pretty straightforward otherwise. But while her damage is a caliber above Ganyu's, Ayaka is a lot more selfish of a character. Both her passive talents exist to serve only her, and her constellations are the same. Mind you, this is not to her detriment. With that much damage, it would be unfair for her to have supportive elements, but unlike Ganyu who's able to accommodate for whatever your team needs, Ayaka has to have her team constructed around her, limiting the number of characters you can feasibly pair up with her. Though to her credit, she can be just as good, if not better at chaining freeze due to the frequency of cryo application in her kit and she handles clusters of enemies with ease. It might be a little tricky to hold enemies in place long enough to get all 20 hits of her ultimate in, especially the heavy ones who don't get staggered, but truthfully speaking, it's extremely rare for anyone to survive long enough to face tank the entire blizzard. If you're trying to reach ideal efficiency on her, it will come with a higher price tag though. Ayaka is fully operational at base, but it's generally recommended for you to get her at C2 since that extra damage and coverage is honestly kind of broken. Also, she's a bit more reliant on Cryo's elemental resonance to achieve maximum crit, as she doesn't have the same passive bonus crit rate the way Ganyu does. Though if all you care about is raw damage, Ayaka beats out almost everyone in the game, at least overall. I say overall because if we're talking about who can do the most amount of damage in a single blow, that would probably go to Hu Tao. Like the two cryo units, Hu Tao was one of the most anticipated characters early last year, and while her presence has gone down a little, she had almost a chokehold over the DPS department prior to Inazuma. Even now, she's still one of the best in the game. Unlike most of the DPS characters who rely on attack as their baseline stat, Hu Tao's parameter of interest is health. Guide to Afterlife is a flat attack increase based on her max health, just over 6% at rank 10. So assuming you have around 35k, that's over 2,000 bonus attack, all while having a massive amount of health. Additionally, she imbues herself with Pyro, which cannot be overridden by any other elemental infusion. She also gains super armor, and charge attacks deal lingering damage over time afterwards. For all intents and purposes, Hu Tao's elemental skill could easily qualify as an elemental burst in light of all the stuff it does, but her actual elemental burst, Spirit Soother, is where the single blow thing comes into play. In conjunction with the overwhelming attack boost from her skill, the ultimate's damage scaling is incredible, and if you time it to trigger Vaporize or Melt, reaching 200, 300, or sometimes 400,000 damage happens rather frequently. The numbers may not look as ridiculous as Ayaka's, but remember that Ayaka's burst happens over a long time, Hu Tao's is one shot. Another important thing to remember is that Hu Tao is the only main damage dealer who explicitly gains more attack, not just augmenting her elemental burst damage, but also her normal attacks as well. While the base scaling is a bit lower than most others, her charge attack only doing 242% at rank 10 compared to the usual 300 for melee, she gets so much attack from Gaeta Afterlife that it makes her auto attack damage better in practice. Of course, just like the first two, Hu Tao is imperfect. In her case, her weakness is how reliant she is on her skill for all the damage. If you use Gaeta Afterlife, then swap out early for whatever reason, then swap back, you have to wait a full 16 seconds before you can use it again. Normally, if you make use of the full buff duration, it doesn't feel as long since it takes a while for you to go through all your buffs again. But that's only if you make full use of it. Outside of her E, she's pretty useless. Gearing her up is even more expensive too. Unlike Ayaka and Ganyu, whose constellations and personal weapon are kind of optional, Staff of Homa and Constellation 1 are essentially mandatory, on top of really having to optimize your artifacts for HP. Regardless, no one does pyro damage better than her. Alright, this next one will piss off a lot of Ayato names, but hear me out, okay? But down those pitchforks, please, I'm too young to die. It might be weird to see Child aka Tartaglia on this list considering he's not the most popular among the roster, and there was a lot of discussion on whether or not Ayato is stronger than him. From my experience and what I've surmised from the community, Ayato is overall easier to use, whereas Child requires tighter execution but has more potential burst damage. Anyways, as one of the earlier units in Genshin, it's crazy to think how well he withstood the test of time, being released in November of 2020. Playstyle-wise, he operates almost identically to Hu Tao. The majority of his damage is gated behind Foul Legacy Raging Tide, abandoning his bow altogether and creating several weapons out of pure water while entering a melee stance. In this form, his attacks always do hydro damage. Furthermore, Havoc Obliteration changes from an explosion of hydro damage with his bow to a slash with the spear that detonates Riptide status on all targets hit while having more base damage. Unlike Hu Tao, however, whose damage comes in the form of raw attack, Child's damage stems from Riptide, supplementing his otherwise average scaling. His elemental burst is also dependent on exploding as many Riptide-affected enemies as possible for maximum damage, because the explosions themselves are AoE. 
If done correctly though, Child's Burst is incredible. It takes a lot of practice but with all the different things you have to line up, but it's not mechanically strenuous enough to lower its consistency. And speaking of consistency, Raging Tides is an interesting cooldown mechanic. You can stay in melee stance for up to 30 seconds at a time and deactivate it at will. However long you stay in melee stance is however long the cooldown will be when you exit it, with a minimum downtime of at least 6 seconds. In all honesty, I wish that was on every buff related elemental skill, but for him it makes a lot of sense. He's equal parts persistent and frontloaded damage, and foregoes a lot of the inherent weaknesses of being a bow user by outright not using his bow most of the time. Child is also rather inexpensive to build. As an older unit, his constellations are kind of meh, with the exception of C1. That said, constellation 1 is more for ease of use or quality of life than damage enhancement. The 4 star bow Rust is also fantastic on him since he doesn't even use game shots to begin with most of the time. Also, as a bow user, a lot of bows work well on him. Polar Star is his go to, but Skyward Harp works just as well. In essence, he has all of the benefits of being a bow user without any of the detriments. Last but not least, we have Raiden Shogun. I was kind of torn on whether to put her in the DPS or support video, but I ultimately decided she's known more for killing people than cheerleading. Forget being one of the strongest DPS units in the game, Shogun is one of the best in the game, period. She has it all. Damage, burst, support, consistency, synergy, utility, everything you can ask for other than healing, defense, and crowd control. Her DPS is heavily contingent on getting her elemental burst off as often as possible, but with how quickly she recharges energy given that she scales off of energy recharge, that's not even a problem to begin with. Burst damage is where all hell breaks loose. Admittedly, a lot of Shogun's actual damage is a result of her making the other members of her party stronger, but in that sense, you can say it's her own damage by proxy. Even so, Musou Shinsetsu has some of the best scaling and uptime you can ask for. All of her attacks become Electro and she gains bonus Electro damage based on her energy recharge. Furthermore, with Constellation 2, the burst part of her ultimate does partial true damage, giving her the same kind of front-loaded pressure as Hu Tao and Child, albeit with more external help. The best thing about her is that she doesn't have to be out for a long time to do what she wants to do, hence why she's the current lead of the national team. Quick swap burst rotation has been the main way to approach combat for a while, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. She single-handedly increases the efficiency and uptime of your entire team by not only serving as a battery, but also increases their burst damage which in turn increases her burst damage which in turn batteries her team to repeat the cycle over and over again. Shogun synergizes with literally every character in the game. The only two downsides to her are that she's an Electro user which frankly is the only thing keeping her balanced, and the other being she's very expensive. While you can certainly make do with a 4 star weapon to catch, Engulfing Lightning is really the only weapon that works on her, and if you want to make use of her as a main DPS you need to have C2. Plus, this is mostly anecdotal, but farming Emblem of Severed Fate is the most soul crushing thing in the game so you'll be burning through both your wallet and resin storage to gear her up. Though the payoff is most certainly worth it, as you'll have someone who will likely be future proof for a very long time. Alright, so that's it for today's list. Do you agree or disagree with my choices? Feel free to share in the comments down below. Honorable mentions include Xiao and Ayato, who are very close to being on this list, but again, I can only choose 5. The next episode will be covering the top 5 supports in Genshin, so if you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to the next one, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other discussion topics if you haven't yet. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you again hopefully soon. Take care.